Add a little egg which is hidden underneath and then top it all up with a layer of cheese and bake it in the oven. Hey guys and girls on Ash Spinnies, it's Kathy Cat. This time we're not in Tokyo, we're actually over in Kyushu in Mojiko. And Mojiko is famous and known for the yaki curry. Now, we're gonna talk a little bit more about curry because you guys probably didn't know how much of a curry country Japan is. Do you like curry? Generally people say no, it's a dish that everyone enjoys and there's so many flavors to it. Let's go and find out a little bit more about the special curry that we can find here in Mojiko. Japan's first contact with curry. Now obviously we have the image of curry coming from India and the spices, but it is said that one of the many theories actually is that curry came from the USA to Japan. Now we're going back all the way back to the samurai period in the 1870s. A Japanese physicist was said to have set over to the USA on a boat and that boat was from the USA and he ate his very first curry there. And then from there on, Japan opened up its borders and everything became more international. And so curry became a food that was an international food that people enjoyed and that brought them closer to the rest of the world. N -E -X -T. Who put the potato in the curry? Now, according to some legends going back in time, those ideas of putting potatoes into curry wasn't a thing in India. We, we had vegetables, we had meat with other ingredients, but not so much potato. So who did it? Apparently, it was the Americans. The assistant headmaster of the Sapporo Agricultural School in Hokkaido, Mr. William Smith Clark. Hmm. This gentleman thought that the Japanese people looked so, so skinny and so thin and he, he thought they needed more nutrition. In order to change that, he thought rather than eating rice, they should be eating potatoes. So, came up with the idea of putting potatoes into curry. And since he was at Hokkaido, meaning Hokkaido is famous for their fruit and vegetables, especially also for their potatoes, he put the potato into the curry to give people more vitamins and proteins. This is how the potato became a basic part of the Japanese curry. The curry on the second day is especially yummy! Japanese people enjoy their curry not for one but for two days. Now, when I was staying with my host family here in Japan the first time I came, we had curry on one dinner and then on the next morning. And I was always wondering why we had curry twice and I thought it's maybe because they made too much curry? But it was actually on purpose. The reason why Japanese people have curry the day after is because the flavor and the taste of the curry changes for the second day because it gets even yummier. It's like the miracle evolution of food. You will have a completely different taste or very changed taste from the first day compared to the second day. But why? For example, yakikari is a great second day curry because you can use the curry from the night before, add some cheese on top and bake it. And why is it like that? Well, first, the meat, the vegetables, all the ingredients you have, the extract of that more and more slowly, slowly goes into the lovely soup. Then the soup cools down and then you heat it up again. It's like when you, you get to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, you're a little bit fresher than the night before. Number three, the soup gets thicker and milder. And one more thing I need to mention here, if you warm up the curry the next day, add a little bit of water and make sure that the heat it completely reached every part of that curry. That's one thing that my host family and every Japanese person told me, make sure you heat it up thoroughly on the second day to enjoy it the best. For example, this octopus, if you put octopus into your curry on the next day, the whole curry will have even more of a flavor of the octopus. And so the first day curry is the fresh curry and the second day curry is like the aged curry. N -E -X -T. Japan's great variety of curry. Now, Japan has become a country that loves its curry so much you can find it almost anywhere. You can buy certain things in a convenience store, for example, udon with curry, mixing curry with different types of noodles here in Japan. There is also curry flavored little things. There's so many things that have curry. You go to the bakery and even there you can buy bread that has curry inside. 
N E X T. Japanese people don't just love curry; they also love giving things a new spin and their own little twist. So here at Moji Port, we can enjoy yaki kare. I want to find out more about it. I want to try it. So I'm gonna go and eat as many yaki kare as I can. So let's go. Something unique to Moji is the yaki curry, and I came here to find out more. So we're right now at Kari Hompo, and we're gonna ask a little bit around. じゃあよろしくお願いします。お願いします。じゃあの焼きカレーはここで有名なんですけど、そもそも私焼きカレー全く知らないので、はい、どういったものですか。料理作ってるんですね。はい、ありがとうございます。おおじゃああの焼きカレーって一応どういった料理なんですか。焼きカレーとは中にですねご飯があって。えっ、ー、と上にいるカレーソースですかね。で、がトッピングしてあって、上にチーズとトッピングですね。がしてある料理になってて、320度のオーブンで焼いてあります。おお、なんかこの辺にカレーのレストラン結構あちこち見えるんですけど、それはなんででしょう。えー、西洋文化が早く入るような時期になっていたので、焼きカレーの文化も早く発祥したと思います。ああ、やっぱり港だからですね。カレー大好きなんですかね。はい、もちろん好きです。じゃあこの店のおすすめお願いしたいんですけど、どれがいいですか。おすすめはですね、昔の焼きカレーがおすすめです。その理由のトッピングがあります。じゃあそれ一つをください。はい。おお。おお、すごい。これこれはや焼きカレーですね。はい。なんか熱々で美味しそうです。え食べ方はどうなんですか。最初にですね、普通にこのまま食べていただいて、途中から卵を混ぜていただいたり、お好みで食べていただいて大丈夫です。楽しみ。I am so excited about this. It looks so good already, and it smells so good already too. <gasps> This is so good. Oh wow! It's more than just curry. Like I didn't know what to expect. This is amazing. So you have like the juices from the Japanese wa beef, from the proper wagyu, and they're like super in that curry. Everything is enveloped by it, and then it's so creamy and rich at the same time. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Now what I've been told, the amazing thing is. That depending how you eat it, the flavor will change. So, for example, the egg now here. Look at this. I'm gonna burst the egg now, and then my curry is gonna get a whole new flavor. Woohoo! Well, that's different again. The egg really complements the original flavor. Oh, this is fun! Ah, and the amazing thing is here we have some pickles with it. And over here, we has a, have a spicy oil with it. So this spicy oil here again contains a lot of different flavors, and you're supposed to eat them together with the curry. Meaning, at least you get different flavors every time. So you know, you start with the original curry, then you add the egg, then you add the other spices, so you can enjoy four to five or even more different flavors depending on how you mix it all up. Good so so on this time. That was so good. That was so fragrant. This type of curry I haven't had in Japan yet, so I'm excited to find out more. Ah, oh, and I like the the little、um, bowl that we have here. It's like still nice and warm because I ate it so fast. This is the adult black curry from Mojiko Sario. Now, adult black curry. I have no idea what we can expect <laughs> with that name. And as you can see, it's already black. Now, this one is a seafood-based curry. They said, and again, it is the yaki kare, the yaki curry that we talked about, the oven baked one. And the blackness is actually squid ink. Ooh. 
Mmm! The cheese adds an extra cream part to it. But if you, if you really taste it, it has a seafoody flavor with it. But also, it's super rich. Super, super rich. The nuance of the seafood actually fits really well with the creaminess of the curry. Like first I was wondering if the seafood would overpower it, but it's not fishy. I don't know how they're doing it, but it rather than it being fishy, it just has a nice flavor, always like a fragrance to it. This place here came up with the idea to have yaki curry on the go with the yaki curry hot dog. Okay guys, we have the yaki curry dog here. Yaki kare dog. I think the original hot dog just got upgraded. I do like this. To be honest, I prefer this to the normal hot dog. Not much of a ketchup friend, but the um, the curry really complements the hot dog actually. We are at a sweet shop and you can see loads of cakes and everything around, but guess what? We found yakikare donuts. Mojiko baked curry donuts. Baked curry donuts. I'm so, so excited about this one. Okay. Ah, it smelled sweet and yet spicy. Mmm. After all this spicy curryness, this one here gives it a nice balance with a lot of sweetness and that's what I need right now, just that little bit of sugar to give me like a nice kick. Oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. You see that a lot that Japan picks up something that is not sweet and then tries and make it work with sweets? This one here totally works out. I've seen it with other things as well, ice cream and similar where people really put a lot of effort into creating a dish that merges something sweet and a dish that's popular. あの、自分にとってカレーって何ですか。そうですね。ま、重要なもんですね。できました。お客様の反応は最初はですね、みんなビビられたですね。え、カレー味のドーナツっていう人がやっぱりだいぶいますけどね。でもいっぱい食べた方は、あ、美味しかったよね。それでまた買ってくれる人もいますし。挑
ました。This restaurant is called Mitsubishi Curry, the Honey Bee's Curry. I spoke with the owner and he recommended me their Juju Yaki Curry. Juju means sizzling. A sizzling hot baked curry special? I had to find out what that was. They make you pour the warm, creamy curry right into a heated iron plate to create that extra sizzle. I felt like we're doing a high class food show. Oh, what can I say? It's simply delicious. Why did people invent yaki curry? Because it takes a yummy thing and tops it up with more yummy toppings. It's perfection! While strolling around town, we found Roku Yogan. It's a cafe that has a real retro music charm to it. While you are enjoying a drink or a meal, you can listen to classy jazz, blues, or even catch a live performance. We also found out that they have created their own yaki curry variant. It's this one! Yaki curry is prepared and baked to perfection inside a bread bun. The air is rich with the tasty smell of baked curry and bread. It's a match made in heaven. Creamy, fragrant, Perfect. Next, we found a more exotic cafe named Princess Pipi. So this store or this restaurant is actually famous for the banana beer as well. Apparently they don't sell this one. They only make it here and then you can only drink it here. They have the alcoholic version and here for me is the non-alcoholic version. Again, it has Princess Fifi on it. So yeah. Cheers. Ooh. It's fruity, it's fresh, but it still has the taste of beer, even though this is non-alcoholic. Oh, actually not bad. I like it. Yes, I ordered their big chunky vegetable curry. Mmm. Oh, this definitely has an Asian curry feel to it. Oh, it has the curry burn that you expect from an Asian curry. It has the coconut flavor. So this one is like a fusion of the Japanese curry and Thailand curry. Thailandish. Thai curry. Mitsui Club was built in 1921. It's now a designated cultural property of Japan. On the first floor, you'll find a classy restaurant and the second floor is an exhibition space. That has a surprising connection to Germany. Albert Einstein stayed in this building when he came to Japan on one of his lecture tours. And over here is the Einstein Memorial Room. Hi. 
So right now we are here at Mitsui Club and on top of traditional Japanese tatami mats, curry is served here, Japan style. And it's served, as you can see, in a hot baking tin. So this one is you put in the curry on top of rice, add a little egg, which is hidden underneath, and then top it all up with a layer of cheese and bake it in the oven. So this is a real nice hot warm dish that warms up the heart and the soul. And I am excited to try it out. So my hand would be, since it is hot, oven baked, and is served generally steaming and piping hot. <laughs> Let's go. Mm. See, I love curry. And the amazing thing is with Japanese curry, it's not too spicy, nothing's overpowering. Everything is in perfect balance. It's creamy, it's gentle, but it's total, total comfort food. Since their classy curry contains seafood, it also included the local delicacy, pufferfish. I love it. And as Mojiko is also famous for bananas, you might find, like me, a banana in there. The director and I have tried so many different types of curry, but guess what? We still haven't tried all of them. There are many, many more here in Moji to go and try. And you'd maybe think that by now we'd be tired of all the curry. Nuh-uh! Because each recipe, each restaurant gave it their own twist, their own style, a different flavor. What we did was a tabe aruki, meaning to eat and walk to different places and experience different types of food. And I hope you guys feel inspired to try the same when you come to Kyushu. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a big like. You like really really matters and if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe because we deliver you more and more fun stuff here from japan to you guys no matter where in the world you are i hope you have a lovely day and i'll catch you soon for more stuff here on ash japanese bye oh and there's more cool travel videos on our channel be sure to check them out thanks for watching and we are back in our hostel now after going around eating all the curry that we could try. Now in Japan, there's a big thing when you go on a journey, you always bring a gift home. So for example, in Europe, we usually send cards, but in Japan, it's generally food related. And since we are here in yakikori heaven, we found a lot of yakikori styles that we can introduce to you now. So for example, there's a premium yakikori that looks already so creamy. It's like the kind of hotel yakikori. And remember when we went to Princess Fifi? Princess Fifi had their own curry too and they're selling it in stores. They're that proud that, you know, you can not only eat it in the actual restaurant, you can take it home with you. Then we have a Mojiko Yaki Curry one that has the typical traditional look. It's also on the back explains how it's done. Then we have the Mojiko Mitsubachi Curry. That's the place we went to with the really nice staff, good music, really nice atmosphere. And I bought it there and then to take home. This is a two-piece pack so you can compare two different flavors. Now this is actually not curry related but because of the retro feel and the story of you know banana coming in first into Japan and having a very different way of selling it. They have here Mojiko Retro Banana Baumkuchen. It's like the fusion of everything. It has Mojiko in it, it has bananas in it, it has the retro style in it, but it has also the Baumkuchen in it, in it and that's, you know, originally from Germany. So I felt like <laughs> I needed to get that. I needed to get that Banana Baumkuchen. Since Moji's character is Jimo, I got a little friendship Jimo bracelet. Uh, no, bracelet is a little key holder. There's two. So you can share them with a friend or something. And then you, you both have the funny, cute little Gmo to carry around. I thought it was a really cute idea. And this one here is the masterpiece of our omiyage, of our gifts. It's Fugu Yaki Kare. This connects our journey to Shimonoseki and this connects our journey to Moji.